It is time for overrated or underrated here on Canuck Central. Producer Josh Elliott Wolf. Hello. Hi, Josh. Uh, let's get started with Austin in Langley. Letters to season ticket holders, overrated or underrated? <laughs> well, you know what? It's underrated for content because yes. we got a segment out of it, so I loved it. But it's overrated, obviously. I say it after we did our opening segment. Yes. Yeah. Well, like for us personally, <laughs> you know, not that I'm biased or anything, but we could save all of the things that we had planned for today and push it to tomorrow. Yeah. So, so now we don't even have to think about the show tomorrow. No, it's we already, It's already planned. Content. We love it. Um, okay. Kidding aside, le- letters to season <laughs> ticket holders, a necessary part of the business. Of course. Uh, Season ticket holders mean everything to professional sports franchises, of Mm -hmm. course. And they do give us a little bit of insight into how the management group is thinking. And I think in this case, yeah, maybe some, like there will be too much made of the entirety of it. But there are some little nuggets in there that are at least telling of what management may be thinking. The key with these things is to try to show, especially your stakeholders, people really spending money on your team, that you're going to be truthful with them to some degree. Yeah. And that's kind of it. You know, like you don't want to get too, you don't want to be too fluffy because you don't want to sell them, you know, magic beans. You want to yes. be truthful about what you are selling them and what you are giving them to some extent, and then there'll be some fluff added onto it. So some, some truth with it. But I'd say the overall takeaway should be deemed as somewhat overrated unless you're Ethan Bear because you gotta feel pretty good about being in the uh, season ticket yeah holders letter big win for Ethan Bear yes uh, big oh. dub for Ethan Bear yeah. today he, oh, uh, his agent is like so happy today <laughs> like oh okay <laughs> now now we can play ball now we can play ball yeah. thank you Jim uh, OFC the talkit bump being due to the work done in Abbotsford Ah, the talking bump. Due, due to the work being done in Abbotsford. So I guess the uh, the insinuation is Willannon, PDG, yeah. Olman goes back, comes up, put Coles in, goes in, you know, Delia. I would say overrated. To the level of impact? Yeah. But, because ultimately, like, the yeah. Canucks are winning because Tockett's riding his star players too much. It's overrated for on ice impact. It's an underrated storyline generally for success. It's an underrated success story for the Canucks, I think, the work they've done in Abbotsford. I would say it, that is the biggest takeaway from what management has done over the first 15 months, what Jeremy Colleton's been able to do. And Tockett's praised, you know, that development himself, yeah. you know, talking about the work defensively uh, that Colleton's done with this group of players so yeah there is an underrated element to it but why are the Canucks winning hockey games right now they're winning because Thatcher Demko has been standing on his head a bunch Elias Pettersson and Andre Kuzmenko and Quinn Hughes have gone just supernova and even even JT Miller I think JT is a top 20 scorer since January 1st in the NHL so you can't even scoff at, at what he's been able to do Drew Jack Rathbone overrated or underrated oh boy Mm. Um, I mean, can it be overrated right now? Because of, I mean, does anybody look at Jack Rathbone? Like, I don't hear anybody discussing Jack Rathbone in this market as future top four defensemen. Not or, anymore. Right. Right yep. now, I'd say it's underrated because of that. There's still a ton of talent there. A um, lot of tools. Yeah. I think with Jack, you know, there's just moments where in his mind he can make a play in the AHL like that pinch he can make that play he's got enough time and space to do it um at the NHL level he keeps getting burned in he some does. of those situations and, and I guess the question is how much does he need to play to figure that stuff out yeah but also you, you keep doing the same thing no coach is gonna gonna accept that and that's yeah. why you saw him come out of the lineup mm-hmm. you know despite playing a couple of games and flashing the puck moving flashing the shot of his the, the skating, offensive instincts. Man, it's just so there's a lot to work with there yeah but skating is so good yeah it's I'd say he's an underrated asset because I just don't know. I, I don't see the pathway in Vancouver, Dan. Like, if OEL is going to be here, and we'll see, right? And they're bringing in another lefty defenseman who's going to be a PK guy or a defensive guy. Let's say Gabrikov, whose name comes out. Like, wh- where does he fit in? Yeah. And you use him as a trade chip. 
And at some point, the waiver eligibility is going to be an issue. And even if his trade value is not sky high, he hits waivers. Somebody's going to take a flyer on him. Yeah. Um, it's a tough spot with Jack Rathbone. Right now, I'd say overrated. All right, this one from Dom, Reach's favorite. Kuzmenko shooting percentage, overrated or underrated? Mm. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's overrated, man. <sighs> Wait. Well, I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> maybe, sh- maybe shooting- the narrative around his shooting percentage. Yeah. Oh, it's underrated. I yes. mean, come on. Like, okay. He's now shooting basically 28%. Yeah, it's almost 30%. That's not sustainable. No. It'll come down by at least 10%. Yes. At least 10%. So, you know, what are we talking about here? We're talking about a guy that's going to lose 10 goals just on shooting percentage. Well, that's, Maybe more. Yeah, but that's that's supposing he shoots the puck as the same rate that he shot the puck this season. Yeah. Now, he may not score to the same degree. I think that whole notion, I think the discussion is a bit overrated because okay. I do think... Kuzmenko is the type of player who's going to give you, you know, 27, 30 goals. And I think he gives you that. I mean, that's... So, he would have to shoot 15% on 200 shots next year yeah. to get to 30 goals again. And how many is he at right now? He's not even at 150 shots. Yeah, he can shoot more. Okay. He can we'll shoot see. more. He can. He can play more and shoot more. All I said, he's not scoring 40 again next year. <laughs> well, he hasn't Assuming he gets to 40 this he's year. He's got to score 40 first. Okay. So yesterday he was at 35 when I made the statement. He's not getting to 35 again next year. Okay? That's that's wow. what I said. It's well, the story. I can't, I can't, I'm sticking to it. I can't wait for him to get to 37. Uh, basketball Phil. The latest basketball Hall of Fame class. Overrated or underrated? Oh, man. Man, what it's a, like unbelievable class. Incredible class. Incredible class. It is. It's. It's. I'd say it's underrated. I mean, it's all these guys surefire Hall of Famers. Yeah. And Becky Hammond being in it, too, is massive. You talk about a trailblazer uh, in the women's game. Dirk T- Nowitzki. To Tony me, Parker and Dirk Nowitzki. To me, Dirk. Yeah. Dirk was so ahead of his time. I mean, for a guy that big... To be as good a shooter as he was, yeah. and once he perfected that fade in the high post, it was unstoppable. You, you couldn't stop that shot, right? Just such a marvelous player, and you know, obviously Dwayne Wade. I remember watching Dwayne Wade and Marquette when he was playing college ball. Yeah, and it was just, it was just unreal. Like the amount of power he played with and yeah. everything, and then he gets to the NBA, and and he was even better, which was just astonishing. All of these players in this year's Hall of Fame class, it makes me feel old, though, Dan, because <laughs> I'm going and back to— And your guy, to, Pau Gasol. How many uh, titles did he help your Lakers win? I mean, he helped them win three titles. Yeah. And the thing with Pau Gasol, which I loved so much, too, was such a smart player. Mm-hmm. Great defensive presence. I mean, what a Hall of Fame class. You know what I'll remember about Dirk Nowitzki? People th- saying that uh, Andrea Bargnani was going to be the next Dirk. Oh, my God. <laughs> no one's going to be the next Dirk. Yeah. I mean, Luka Doncic. Il Mago was not it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so close. So close. I have an Andrea Bargnani signed jersey somewhere. You do? Yeah. Well, you were hyped on him, too, because he was I Italian. I mean, those Ital pasta commercials, man. Oh, yeah. Fire it up. <laughs> How hyped were you <laughs> when they drafted him? You were pretty yeah. hyped up. Let's go. Yeah. Andrea Bargnani. Did you ever got... meet him? No. Mm. That would have been fun. Yeah. Uh, actually, I did. You did? Of course, I did. I got the I got the signed jersey. He came to the he came to the autograph shop. Did you get a photo day. with him? No. You should have. Would have put I mean, the Chara photo to shame. <laughs> <laughs> He's like four inches He's taller than Chara. Quite quite large. <laughs> quite a big man. He's like seven feet tall. Yeah. 